Hello. In this next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at how to process an accounts receivable payment batch. So in this lesson, we're going to be looking at it by utilizing the following uh, functions within X3. Uh, the initial payment batch is going to be generated using utilizing the payment receipt entry function. Then we will subsequently generate the deposit slip by utilizing the automatic remittance creation. Then finally, we'll go ahead and post the activity to the general ledger utilizing the bank posting function. So to start, let's go ahead and come under our APAR accounting menu, then go to payments and payment receipt entry. In this case, we're going to be doing um, a batch of check receipts. So we're going to scroll down to the entry transaction RECCH check receipts. Then we're going to go ahead and click on the new button. In the entry batch field, we're going to go ahead and put an asterisk in that field and that's the indication to X3 that a new batch number should be assigned. In the description, we'll go ahead and give it a meaningful description here um, so that when we do our subsequent postings, we can reference that. Go ahead and specify our financial site. Now at this point, if we come over to our left list and click on the open items tray, that's going to show you all the open invoices and credit memos that are applicable to this particular site. Okay, so we'll go ahead and specify a paying BP. Tab down through. This is the bank account into which we're going to deposit the funds. So in our first example, we'll just do an easy one here. Let's say the customer's paying this invoice right here, valued at uh, $1,070. So I'm going to go ahead and just put in 1,070 even. Specify my check number. Then I'm going to come over and click on that item. And that'll go ahead and load the invoice details into the grid. Then I'll come over and click on the Create button. And that's going to serve to create a new batch number for me ending in 002. And it's also going to assign a payment identification number to that payment. All right. We'll go ahead and do another new. Tabbing through. Let's say we got another check and tabbing down into it. Now, in this case, we have a invo open invoice uh, valued at $5,289. So let's say in this case, uh, this customer does a short payment and it's for a significant amount that we don't want to write it off. So let's just say they send in 5,000 even and we want to leave that $289 open on account. So we'll specify that BP amount. Now what you'll notice is that when we go ahead and click on that, it'll go ahead and load the invoice detail in again, but it only is going to apply the $5,000 that we have to apply. Go ahead and click on Create. So now at this point, you'll see that this invoice now has an open balance of $289. Load in our next payment. We'll do new again. Okay. So in this next example here, let's say that um, we're receiving a payment uh, from this customer. All right. Now, in this case, let's say that we receive a payment, and again, it's a short payment, 
but it's for a, you know, maybe an insignificant amount that we just wish to write off. So in this case, let's say they send in $210 and we just want to write off that $4 balance. So we'll put in our 210. We'll go ahead and select it. It'll go ahead and apply the cash. Then what I can come down on line number two here, in my attribute, I'm going to choose this customer discount attribute. Apply it against the invoice for the four remaining dollars. And that'll serve to write off that four dollar balance. Okay. In this next example here, Let's say we have a customer and they send in a deposit on account. So when we're dealing with a deposit situation, we'll go ahead and say it's a $7,000 deposit. We'll go ahead and tab through. Now down in this block here, we're going to go ahead and leave the type and entry fields blank and put $7,000 there. And that'll go ahead and serve to put a $7,000 credit on the uh, customer's account. All right. Um, in this next one here, let's say that um, the customer is sending in a payment and let's say in this example that they're paying two invoices each for $1,500 and they're also taking a $1,500 credit memo. So let me sh so in that case, um, the net payment is going to be for $1,500. Now, when I click on these items in the left list, when there's credit memos that are on the remittance slip, I always recommend to select them first. So what you'll see is when you do it in that way, select the credit memo first, then go ahead and select the invoices that are being paid. X3 uh, basically does the math for you. It takes into account that um, we basically have a negative $1,500 so that when you select the subsequent two invoices here, it'll go ahead and retire them for the full amount. And we can go ahead and click on that. Okay, so those are, you know, some of the common uh, payment receipt scenarios that you'll have. Now, a couple of additional things to note before we go through our posting routines. If you come over to this entry batch tab, this is going to give you a register of all the payments that make up the batch. Then down here you have the total number of payments as well as the total dollar value that you can tie out against. All right. Um, in addition to that, if you wish to print out some supporting documentation, over here on the print button, you can go to list and choose this payment listing report. And in here, in my lot range field, I'm going to post in my batch number. Oops. And we'll come over here and print. Pardon me, I must have misset one of my filters here. Let's try that once more. We've got an open date range there. Got the check receipt. That all looks good. Just run this for eight three.
Oh, that's better. So in here, this will give you a listing of your payments. Then over on the final pages here, you get your batch total as well as the total number of payments that make up the batch. Okay, so that's your payment listing. So now at this point, uh, the second step in the process is to generate the deposit slip. So under APAR accounting, we're going to go to remittances and automatic remittance creation. We'll come in here, oops, specify your legislation, come into the entry batch field, and we're going to go ahead and choose our batch that we just created. And that should serve to generate the deposit slip just for that particular batch. We'll go ahead and click on OK. And I get my deposit slip number up here at the top, as well as my batch totals. All right, so that's my deposit slip. Then the third step in the process is to post the activity to the GL uh, utilizing the bank posting function. So we'll go ahead and end out of here, go to APAR accounting, back under payments and bank posting. Specify the legislation. Come to uncheck your all entry batches. Go ahead and choose the batch that you wish to post. Make sure that your accounting date is in agreement with the date on the payments. If there's any, if any of your payments are booked in a foreign denomination, it's also important to specify the value date because that will serve to be the date that's referenced uh, when X3 um, ties back to a currency um, exchange rate table. Then we'll come over here and do an OK. And that will go ahead and generate your journal entries for the deposit. OK. So at this point, you know, your cash would be debited. Um, your accounts receivable would be credited. And any discounts that you had referenced would also be debited. OK. So I hope this uh, video was of help to you. If so, I'd ask you to please uh, remember to like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to inbox me. Thanks a lot.